what would happen if I connect this red LED to this 9 volt battery directly? Before we dive into that, let us take a moment to understand a few things. First, let's peek into the VI relationship of a resistor. Notice how the current ramps up linearly with voltage. So it's a perfect example of Ohm's law in action. Now let's have a look at the IV characteristics of an LED. We'll consider the red LED for this entire discussion. So notice how the current remains minimal until a specific voltage value. But beyond this point, even a slight increase in the voltage triggers a drastic surge in the current. Thus, it's an exponential or non-ohmic relationship. The brightness of an LED is determined by the amount of current flowing through it. But a large amount of current can either reduce its lifespan or damage it permanently. So, always consult the datasheet for the maximum current limit and never breach it. Now, the datasheet also discloses the forward voltage value. This is the minimum amount of voltage that is required to switch on the LED. Generally, we use 3.3 volts, 5 volts, 9 volts, etc. to energize our circuits. So let's say if you're using 3.3 volts in your circuit and if you apply this voltage directly to your red LED, then understand that this voltage is very much above the threshold voltage. And as you can see from the graph, it will cause a huge amount of current to flow through the LED. And definitely this will be beyond the maximum current limit. And certainly this type of current will damage the LED. So what should be done to avoid this? So to mitigate this, we connect a resistor in series with the circuit. And what is the function of this resistor? So the total supply voltage is 3.3 volts. And in order to switch on the LED, we must supply it with a minimum amount of voltage, which is known as the forward voltage, as we've discussed before. And for the red LED, as per the data sheets, this value should be around 1.8 volts. So the remaining drop will be adjusted across the resistor. So why are we doing this? Because we don't want to supply entire 3.3 volts across the red LED because that will cause a huge amount of current to flow through it. But we do need to supply at least the minimum amount of voltage which is required to switch it on. So the rest of the voltage drop can be adjusted across the resistor. But what should be the value of this resistor? So according to Ohm's law, R equals to V by I. So we already know that we want extra voltage drop across the resistor. So what about the current? As I said before, in the data sheet, you will find maximum current limit. So you can choose any value which is equal to or lower than that maximum current. And usually for the red LED as per the data sheets, that value will be around 20 milliampers. But the LEDs can be sufficiently bright at 5 milliampers as well. So just for the sake of this example, I'll choose 5 milliampers. And after substituting all the values, I get around 300 ohms. Now you can choose a value which is closer to the value that you can actually acquire. You wouldn't find 300 ohms, but you can definitely find 330 ohms. So that's the reason why I chose 330 ohms. Now before finalizing the resistor, you also have to consider its power rating. Power rating is nothing but the maximum amount of power that the resistor can safely dissipate as heat without getting too hot. So for that, we use the formula power equals to current times voltage. And we need to substitute 5 milliampers and multiply it with the voltage across the resistor. So as you can see, this value is certainly below 0.25 watts. So it is well within the operating range. So we can go ahead and use this resistor. So after performing the calculations, I connected all the components on a breadboard and I measured the voltages and current using a multimeter. So as you can see, the voltage drop across the red LED is 1.9 volts. Now we had used a value of 1.8 volts in our calculations, but 1.9 volts is within the forward voltage range, which is provided in the data sheet for the red LED. 
So obviously the rest of the drop is across the resistor. The total supply voltage was 3.36 volts as seen on the multimeter. And the value of the resistor was supposed to be 330 ohms. But as seen on the multimeter, it was 333 ohms. So there will always be plus or minus 5% difference in the value of the resistor and that's fine. And we were expecting a current of 5 milliamperes, but as you can see here, I'm getting a current of around 4.24 milliamperes, which is obviously near 5 milliamperes. And as you can see, the LED appears sufficiently bright. Thus, rather than applying 3.3 volts directly to the LED and destroying it by causing a high amount of current to flow through it, we use a resistor to limit the current to a known value so that the LED remains sufficiently bright, yet safe. So there's just one more thing that I'd like to include. What will happen if I replace the red LED in the same circuit with the same set of components with a blue one? Well, let's go ahead and check what happens. Now, as you can see, the voltage drop across this blue LED is 2.71 volts while across the red, it was 1.9 volts. So definitely this has increased, which clearly means that the voltage drop across the resistor would have decreased, which is obviously seen here. So the available current, as you can see here, has reduced further, and it is around 1.93 milliamperes. In case of red LED, it was 4.24 milliamperes. Yet you can see that the LED is quite bright. But the point is, you will have to calculate the value of R for different colored LEDs separately because the forward voltage drop and thus the curve would be different for different colors. Now this is just the same for the resistors as well. All resistors follow Ohm's law, but the rate at which the current increases with the voltage will be different for different resistors. So, so is the case with the LEDs. You will have different curves for different colors. Now red is the longest wavelength. So the band gap energy and thus the forward voltage value will be lower for it compared to blue, which is a shorter wavelength. So for blue, the band gap energy will be more, which means the forward voltage value will also be more for it. Always check the data sheet for the range of forward voltages and maximum current. Now, usually these are the typical forward voltage values for different LEDs. And the maximum current for 5mm based red, green and yellow LEDs would usually be 20 milliamperes and for blue and white it should be around 30 milliamperes. Again, always check the data sheet for exact range and values. Now going back to our previous example, in order to get 5 milliamperes, we will have to consider the forward voltage drop of blue LED and we'll have to recalculate the value of R. So this will be the value of resistance. So that's it for today. I hope this video helped you in understanding the importance of current limiting resistor while using an LED. And before I end this one, I have a question for you. Do you think that this is the most efficient way of limiting the current while using an LED? Or are there any other better methods to limit the current? If you know of any, then you can mention them in the comment section below. And now, let's witness the outcome of connecting a 9-volt battery directly to our LED.